Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to do some questions based on TCS and QT question paper that had been conducted this year between the dates of 24th and 26th October. So TCS and QT, if we talk about overall pattern of the paper, what is there in the paper, how the questions were. So they have four sections. They have quants, logical reasonings, and they have portion for coding as well. If we talk about the overall difficulty level of that particular paper, how difficult the paper is, uh, I would say difficulty is easy to moderate. The questions are not very difficult. Questions are not very typical. Just they would need some logic to be solved and to be used with each question that is given in that particular paper. So our concern is going to be the TCS NQT set B paper that had come up. What were the questions that were there? There, so we're going to see those questions and solve those questions. First question that came up there was the savings of an employee equals difference of income and expenditure. So obviously, saving is equals to income minus expenditure. What whatever I'm earning minus whatever I'm uh, spending, difference of that becomes my savings. Okay, if the income of three people A, B, C is considered and it is in the ratio one is to two is to three. Expenses is given, it is in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1. Then what is the order of employees A, B, C in the increasing order of the size of their savings? So basically we need what is going to be the size of their savings, who saves the most, who saves the least. Okay, now let's say that the income of A, let income of A, let it be 100x. So income of A, if it is 100x, the B becomes 200x and C becomes 300x. So these incomes is now mentioned. Now let A's expense talk about expense. So A's expense, I'm taking it to be 90x because it is given 3 is to 2 is to 1. So simplest ratio that we could consider is let's make it 90x. If we talk about B, B becomes accordingly it will be 60x and C would be 30x. So income I have, expenditures I have. Now A is saving. Saving we already know given in the question it is income minus expenditure. Income is 100x, expenses 90x, A's savings becomes 10x. B's saving if we talk about what is B's saving, B's saving is 200x minus 60x becomes 120x and C if we talk about similarly it becomes 300x minus 30x comes out to be 270x okay so person who has saved the most is C followed by B and then A so this becomes C B and A answer to this question comes out to be option D that is C B and A okay now this question could have been solved even logically we could even use some logic if not for the ratios if we use the logic so income is an increasing order a then b earns more than a and c earns more than all two of them now if we talk about the expenses who is spending how much so a is expending the most followed by b is always in the middle so he's getting an intermediate quantity as income also and that expenditure is also an intermediate quantity now c is spending the least so the ratio of expense it's expense we have income we have so this was obviously made clear clear that the person who is going to save the most it is going to be c because c's income is the most and he's spending the least followed by next person would be b because b all both the cases it is an intermediate case so is not earn is whatever is earning in the same ratio he is spending also now if we talk about a a is earning the least but he is spending the most so A would be the person who would come at the last. Same order would be, this order would be followed for their savings also. So either we can go logically or we can go by taking solid proofs, by taking solid values in terms of ratio and get the answer. Okay, next question. A series of books were published at 10 years interval when the 10th book was issued. Sum of the publication years was 19560. When was the first book published? Okay. Since the books are being published at interval of 10 years, they're going to form an AP. Now, next thing that is given to me is sum of the years, sum of the AP. It is given to me as 19560. Okay, now D, difference, common difference for this AP is 10 because it is given to me. 
after 10 years it is being published now we know that sum of the series is n by 2 2a plus n minus 1 into d i need to have when was the first book uh, first book published i need to have the value of a also when the 10th book was issued that is number of terms or my value of n it is equals to 10 given to me already so let's put the value 19560 is equals to 10 by 2 2a plus 10 minus 1 is 9 9 into 10 becomes 90 all right so we have this value when we will solve this when we do all the consideration and multiplication so 19560 and on solving minus 450 would come out to be 10a what we can do either let's just make it either this zeros goes out or you can do it two one times two five times then do the multiplication take it to the other side value of a would come out to be 1911 that is the first book was published in 1911 okay next question a number plate can be formed with two alphabets followed by two digits with no repetition how many possible combinations can we get okay number plate is formed using two alphabets and two digits that is it is obviously a four digit number plate now for alphabets it is a to z i have 26 options for numbers it is 0 to 9 that is i have 10 options okay and it is given to me that repetition is not allowed so we i'm going to go by number of ways it is possible first place if it is two alphabets followed by two numbers if it is talked about first place can be filled in 26 ways all the 26 alphabets can come up here obviously one of them would be used here next place can be filled in 25 ways this is talking with respect to alphabet if we talk with respect to numbers first number can be filled in 10 ways 0 to 9 anything can come up here obviously one of them would be used here next becomes 9 so total number of possible combinations becomes 26 into 25 into 10 into 9 answer comes out to be 58500 option A is my answer. Okay. Next question. Two jars having a capacity of three liter and five liter respectively are filled with mixture of milk and water. In the smaller jar, twenty five percent of the mixture is milk, and the larger jar, twenty five percent of the mixture is water. Jars are emptied into a ten liter flask whose remaining capacity is filled with water. Find the percentage of milk in the flask. Okay. So very easy it is. milk in first if you talk about milk in first jar it's 3 into 25 by 100 that is 3 by 4 liter okay now milk in the second flask if we talk about it's 5 into 75 by 100 because it is given that in the second jar 25% of it is water that means 75% of it is milk when we solve this comes out to be 15 by 4 liter now next thing required answer or require uh, when it is mixed and jars are emptied into 10 liter flask whose remaining capacity is filled with water percentage of milk in the remaining cask that is being asked about okay so re required answer is milk from through of the flask 3 by 4 into 15 by 4 divided by 10 because 10 is the overall capacity into 100 when i do this i'll get my answer capacity is of 2 when you multiply them divided by total quantity is 10 i need this in terms of percentage becomes into 100 when you will do this answer comes out to be 45% match the option option b is my answer next question the value of the scooter depreciates in such a way that its value at the end of each year is 3/4 of its value at the beginning of the same year okay important statement this is if the initial value of scooter is 40000 what it's what is its value at the end of the third year okay initial value it's given it is rupees 40000 now it is given that at the end of the year its value goes down by 3/4 so at the initial value is its value at the beginning of the first year now its value at the end of first year it becomes 3/4 of this 40000 when we do this it comes out to be 30000 okay now this is the value at the start of second year as well 
because it is given the value at the end of one year is the value at the beginning of second year so start of second year also the value is 30000 end of second year what is going to be the value it would be 3 fourth of this 30000 that is already given to us value comes out to be 22500 this will be value at the starting of third year also directly i'm going for end of third year value at the end of third year would be 3 fourth of this 22500 when we solve this it comes out to be 16875 match the option it's option d very simple this is next question that is given in the same series is a can complete a piece of work in eight hours b can complete the piece of work same work is always talked about in 10 and c can do the same work in 12 hours if a b and c start the work together but a leaves after two hours find the time taken by b and c to complete the remaining work okay now this is very easy I know work done it's always equal to either 1 or 100 percent if we talk with respect to time and work work done is either 1 or 100 percent but my work is also equal to LCM of those days in which some time is which completed or LCM of that time duration in which some work is being completed now I can write my work that I have to do as LCM of 8 10 and 12 also LCM is 120. So I can say that I have to do one unit of one work complete or I have to do 100% of the work or I have to complete 120 units of work. All of that is going to be in the same. After this, how I progress it is I'll find out A's efficiency. That is in this case A's work per hour. I'm going to find out A's work per hour. A is taking 8 hours to complete. So this becomes 120 by 8. That is 15 units per hour is A's efficiency. If we talk about B, B is doing the same work in 10 hours. B's efficiency becomes 12 units per hour. C's efficiency, C is doing the same work in 12 hours. So 120 by 12, 10 units per hour comes out to be C's efficiency. Now I have all of their efficiencies. Efficiency is how much work they are doing per hour now work done in initial two hours because it is said that a leaves after two hours that means for the first two hours a b and c they were working together since they were working together how much work they would have done so for the first two hours work done would be 15 plus 12 plus 10 into 2 this becomes 74 units now 74 units of work is completed out of 126 120 units that had to be done 74 is done remaining work is 120 minus 74 that is 46 units now this 46 units would be done by b and c because a has already left only person who's remaining to do the work is b and c remaining work is 46 units it will be done by b and c time taken by b and c to do the work is 46 divided by how much they will do together b and c in one hour is 12 plus 10 that is 22 units per hour when i divided by 22 it is approximately two hours they're taking complete two hours they're taking complete remaining 44 44 46 minus 44 is 2 2 by 11 2 by 22 when you reduce it it becomes 1 by 11 so total time taken by them is to 1 by 11 hours to complete the remaining work option a is my answer okay next question the diagonal of a square is twice the side of an equilateral triangle okay the ratio of the area of triangle to the area of the square it is what we have to find out diagonal of a square i know diagonal of a square is a root 2 a root 2 is equals to Okay, I know diagonal of a square is a root 2 if the side of a square is given as a. Now, according to the question, it is given diagonal of a square is twice the side of an equilateral triangle. So, I'm not going to go with taking the diagonal of one variable and then side in another variable. Let's say if the side of, a, if the, side of the equilateral triangle, if its side is a, the diagonal mentioned would be equal to 2a. Let's go with this way. So area of equilateral triangle, 
it is equals to root 3 by 4 a square area of equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a square now area of square area of square is half into diagonal square so area of square is equals to half into diagonal square if diagonal is known i can find the area as well okay half into diagonal square let's use the diagonal as 2a according to the question half into 2a square that is when we do 2a this becomes 4a square divided by 2 2 a square comes out to be the area now root 3 by 4 a square is already the area of equilateral triangle so i need the ratio of area of triangle ratio of area of triangle root 3 by 4 a square is to 2 a square this is what i need a square a square goes out root 3 by 4 is to 2 simplify the denominator root 3 is to 8 becomes my answer my answer is option a okay next question according to the question a arrow b means a raised to power b if f of x is given f of minus 3 is given then what is the value of f of 3 that is being asked okay now this is a very simple question f of x is given as a x power 4 minus b x square plus x plus 5 this is what the question is it's actually a equation of power 4 now f of minus 3 is given f of minus 3 means instead of x i'm going to put out minus 3 so f of minus 3 let's look at what the answer would be a into minus 3 raised to power 4 that is 81 a this becomes minus 9 b minus 3 plus 5 and it is given to me as 2 already so 81 a minus 9 b this becomes plus 2 plus 2 is equals to plus 2 goes out so 81 a minus 9 b equals to 0 i'm going to take it as equation 1 i'm not going to solve it any further because this can be used somewhere when i have to find out 3 f of 3 okay so f of 3 let's do this f of 3 is a x power 4 so again this becomes 81 a minus 9 b plus 3 plus 5 okay 81 a minus 9 b is already equal to 0 from my first equation so i'm going to put it as 0 0 plus 3 plus 5 my f of 3 comes out to be 8 my answer is option c next so a shop sells chocolates it used to sell chocolates for rupees 2 each but there were no sales at that price when it reduced the price all chocolates were sold out okay enabling the, the shopkeeper to realize rupees 164.90 from the chocolates alone if the new price was not less than half the original price quoted how many chocolates were sold and we need to find out at the reduced price okay so we're going to check with respect from the options only let's not go into forming equations so if option a c and d if option A, C and D were used, the required price of the chocolate has to be more than rupees 2. If this is what I'm going to have my answer, it's, if it is either A, C or D, my required price, it has to be more than 2 rupees to get me 164.90 or 0.9 or something close to that. Therefore, my answer is going to be option B. Because if my answer is option B, then only my answer would be somewhere greater than 164.9 and after reducing i would have got money of 164.9 so going with respect to option here is easier because if my answer was a c or d the money would have not been the price of the chocolate has to be more than two rupees to uh, to realize amount of rupees 164.9 so that is why my answer is option b next question Two dice are thrown. Find the probability of getting a multiple of three or four as the sum. Okay. If two dice are thrown, total number of possible outcomes. It's six square. That is 36. So total number of possible outcomes are going to be 36. But the outcomes, favorable outcomes that I need is multiple of three or four. So I'm needing multiple of three or four they are going to be my answers okay possible outcomes let's say so if it is 1 comma 2 sum is 3 okay 1 comma 3 sum is 4 1 comma 5 sum is 6 1 comma 6 will not be used because that is neither a sum of 3 nor 4 now 2 comma 1 can be used 2 comma 2 can be used 2 comma 3 will be 5 of no use 2 comma 4 okay 2 comma 5 not possible 
टू कॉमा सिक्स इज पॉसिबल टू कॉमा सेवन इज नॉट देयर ओके थ्री कॉमा वन इज पॉसिबल थ्री कॉमा टू नॉट पॉसिबल थ्री कॉमा थ्री पॉसिबल थ्री कॉमा फोर इज नॉट अ मल्टीपल ऑफ थ्री और फोर थ्री कॉमा फाइव गिव्स मी एट थ्री कॉमा सिक्स इज माई नेक्स्ट ना फोर फोर कॉमा टू फोर कॉमा थ्री इज नॉट पॉसिबल फोर कॉमा फोर ओके फोर कॉमा फाइव ना फिर टॉक अबाउट फाइव फाइव कॉमा वन सिक्स फाइव कॉमा थ्री एट फाइव कॉमा टू इज सेवन नॉट माई आंसर फाइव कॉमा थ्री ओके फाइव कॉमा फोर येस पॉसिबल फाइव कॉमा फाइव इज ऑफ नो यूज सिमिलरली फाइव कॉमा सिक्स इज नॉट ऑफ एनी यूज सिक्स कॉमा वन नो यूज सिक्स कॉमा टू ओके सिक्स कॉमा थ्री ओके सिक्स कॉमा फोर नॉट अ मल्टीपल ऑफ थ्री और फोर सिक्स कॉमा फाइव सिमिलरली नॉट ऑफ माई यूज सिक्स कॉमा सिक्स कैन बी ऑफ माई यूज सो इफ यू लुक एट द पॉसिबल नंबर ऑफ आउटकम्स फेवरेबल आउटकम्स ऑफ फोर एट ट्वेल्व सिक्सटीन एंड ट्वेंटी सो फेवरेबल नंबर आउटकम्स इज ट्वेंटी प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट इज फेवरेबल आउटकम डिवाइड बाई टोटल ट्वेंटी डिवाइड बाई थर्टी सिक्स दैट इज फेवरेबल आउटकम्स आर फाइव बाय नाइन माई आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए फाइव बाय नाइन